Now what we're going to do is, even though we've saved the string object from our label into our user defaults, when this view appears on screen, we have to have a way of setting this label to the value that's been stored. Okay, and to do that, so we go over to the .m file. Um, to do that, we can use one of the inbuilt methods. Um, and that inbuilt method is called view will appear. So void, and we type view. You'll see that one of the methods associated with views is view will appear. Now this method will get called just before the view appears on the screen, which is what we want. So put the curly brackets in. Now what we have to do is retrieve the key and value that we stored in our user defaults. So we go through the same process, ns user defaults, user defaults equals ns user defaults, standard user defaults. So first of all, we need to make reference to our label. So self dot saved data label dot text equals we're going to call our user defaults and when we set these we call the method set object for key so to retrieve them we call simply object for key and it's expecting an argument of an ns string and that ns string is the name we gave for the key and it was slider value. Close off that method, semicolon. So just before the view gets low, just before the view appears on the screen, this method will get called, and this portion will f go to the user defaults database, find the key called slider label get the object that's stored under that key, which will be our um, our string of the value of the slider, and then it will put it in the text of our label. Okay, so let's try that out. So we set the value, and let's set it to say 50. And we save, and our value is 50. We go back, set it to a different value, save it, and you can see it's been updated. So that's working now. So it's a very easy way of saving data um, and or doing two things really, passing it from one view to another, but also saving it for the next time uh, that the application launches. Uh, one of the the next thing that we're going to do now is um, use a different method within the user defaults. Okay, and to do that, to do that on this view, we need a second label. And we're going to call this label, we're going to call it slider float value. So we need a property and an outlet. So we'll call it slider float value. Connect that up. Okay, now let's hop, hop, hop back over to the the main view.
and go to our .h file and in our save data method here what we're going to do is actually save the raw value from the slider okay so what we've done in this portion here what we've done is we've saved the text of the label okay and of course we had we've set the label to have no decimal points but if you wanted to save the actual value the the unfiltered value from the slider okay then we would have to use a different method we couldn't use set object but luckily for us there is a another user default method called set float for key and, and that's the one we want of course because the value that's returned to us from the slider is a float okay so after this method here we can create a new one user defaults and this time set float for key okay and so we want to make reference to the actual value from the slider this time so we can say self dot my slider dot value and again we can give it any arbitrary name that we want to but let's call it slider float value now one thing to remember with the key names is that when you retrieve the key like we do on the flip side you need to uh, you need to type the exact name here okay so if when you're retrieving the key if you typed slider float value with a small f then it wouldn't be able to find it so it has to be an exact match okay so now that will save the exact value from the slider in other words the number the float value with the six decimal places so if we go back over to our flip side view and we have our label here where we're going to display the actual raw value and again we can do that in the view will appear method Now this time, what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, grab a float value and put it into a label. So we've got the same problem as we've had in previous weeks where we're trying to put a number into something that's expecting a string. So we need the string with format method so what we should do is create an ns string and let's just call it slider string equals ns string string with format now this time we actually want to display the full float value okay so we just call percent f we don't want to restrict the number of decimal places Okay, so we want the full Monty there um, and now here is where we want to retrieve our our float value from the key so we need to call our user default just make a bit of room here so you can see the full thing user defaults and so originally we called set float for key so to retrieve it we say float for key and we give it the we pass it the key name and our key name was slider float value close off that first method and then close off the ns string method and a semicolon now what's that what that is doing is it's grabbing the float value that's stored in this key slider float value key and then forming at, formatting it into a string and then all of that 
is stored in this string object here. So now we've got to set the label text to this string. Okay, so we can say self dot slider float value, which is our label dot text equals slider string. And if we run that now, we should be able to save. So let's just say 90 and hit save. So it's saved that and it's saved now the raw float value. Okay, so there's our string, our filtered string, but this is the actual float value coming from the slider. So you can see what's happening there the, with the rounding. So it's rounding 89.8 .8 up to 90. And so you can see actually the, the continuous nature of a slider now. So we can have values that are in between whole numbers. Now often you don't want that, you want to display a whole number. Um, but you may want you you may want lots of precision in your uh, in your in the number that is set by the user. So in that way, you can use the method called set float for key, and then retrieve it with this method called float for key. Okay, and so. That's all I wanted to show you today. So using the user defaults, it's a very easy way, very easy to, easy way to save little bits of data like numbers and strings by using the set object for key or set float for key. And uh, there are others like for example, set integer for key. So if we wanted to save a whole number um, and you can save arrays in user defaults and um, a number of different other things as well. Um, these three are probably the three most popular that you would use saving numbers, integers and floats and objects like string values. Okay, so using those methods and then synchronizing the user defaults. And then ultimately, we want to retrieve those values from our key. Okay, so we do it with, if we say set object for key to save it, to retrieve it, we use object for key. In this case, we used set float for key. To get it back again, we call float for key. So very, very easy to use. Okay, so that's all for this week. I'll see you next week.